Welcome to another episode of Hack Naked TV, recorded October 13th, 2015. I'm Aaron Lyons, and today we're going to be talking about breaches, Lupe, Uber, and Dow Jones. This episode is brought to you by Black Hills Information Security, the leaders in pen testing and active defense. Email consulting at blackhillsinfosec.com to request a quote today. And by Cyberry. Get the latest hacking and security training from Cyberry.it. Visit hacknaked.tv forward slash Cyberry for the referral for a referral link. So Lupe, uh, the company uh, that was recently acquired by Samsung to uh, power the technology behind their soon to be released Samsung Pay, the Samsung's uh, answer to Google Pay and Apple Pay was breached. Uh, initial reports are that the hackers appeared to be after the company's technology and no customer data was accessed. Uh, they go on to say that um, the hackers had access to Lupe's corporate network but did not compromise the production network where uh, that processed payments and held the uh, customer data. Uh, the investigation is still underway, but it's a clear case that uh, network segmentation does actually work. Uh, on to Uber. Uh, back in February, Uber revealed that as many as 50,000 of its drivers' names, license numbers had been downloaded. Since then, Uber's been focusing its investigation on two public IP addresses that they state can be traced back to the chief of technology at its rival, Lyft, uh, Chris Lambert. Lyft has come forward and said that they've investigated the incident long ago, and there is no evidence that any Lyft employee, including Chris, downloaded the Uber driver information or database or had anything to do with Uber's data breach. They also go on to point out that Uber allowed login, login credentials for their driver database to be publicly accessible for months both before and after the breach. So Uber put their login credentials up on the public web and their database was accessed. And they're trying to point fingers at their rival and the rival saying, no, we didn't do it. Seems like a lot of uh, finger pointing in the fault really lies with Uber publicly disclosing login credentials for their database when all is said and done. This just passed last, just this past Friday, the Dow Jones announced, disclosed a breach affecting 3,500 of its customers. They state that the personal details as well as payment card information of these customers was potentially accessed, but they have no evidence that the data was actually taken. If it was accessed, it was probably taken. That's my view on that. Uh, the Dow Jones has informed law enforcement of the breach that occurred in late July, and there's current speculation that this breach was undertaken by the same hackers that were responsible for the Scott trade breach that we talked about last week and is part of a much larger campaign. We'll be following that closely, see if more details about this supposed large campaign come out. Last, I just wanted to bring to your attention a cool little tool that was just recently released called Twitter. T-W-I-T-T-O-R. You can find it up on GitHub. It's a pretty cool Python-based backdoor that uses Twitter direct message messages for command and control. Basically consists of two files, uh, your command and control um, file, a Python script, and your backdoor that you run on your compromised machine. It then allows you to issue commands through, a, through direct messages on a Twitter account to your different compromised machines. Pretty cool. Hopefully we'll be able to do a short tech segment on it in the coming weeks. That's it for this episode. Don't forget, this Friday, October 16th, we're recording all day from 10 p.m. to 6 p 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. Eastern for our 10th anniversary show on Security Weekly. Thanks. See you next time.